So, uh, do you actually remember the first time you heard metal music? Um, first time I heard metal music, um, I would say when I was um, real little, my brother um, had a pyromania poster on his wall, and I and I was I always thought that album cover was really cool and scary when I was little, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like the building blowing up or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought that was pretty cool, and he had. Uh, he also had um, Sammy Hagar, I Can't Drive 55 poster. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I was always, oh, and yeah. he had, and he also had um, Iron Maiden, um, not Peace of Mind, but, um, oh, God damn it. Oh, Seventh Son, that cover. Oh, seventh Son of a Seventh Son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he had that. He had that on as well, and I always thought that was so cool. And my mm -hmm. brother's not, not even like a super metal head, but at that time when we were young, he had all those posters, and I thought it was scary, but I was also like, like fascinated. My brother's like eight years older than me. Mm -hmm. That brother is. Yeah. So. Do you? When I was young. That, that was influential on me, and we even like. I mean, that fucking Iron Maiden cover. We even kind of like do a little nod to that on our new album cover mm. so it's like still it stuck with me in a weird way <laughs> yep i was actually gonna ask about that you know whether or not you know all of that having that because the 80s metal had a lot of cool imagery going on so did i was just kind of wondering if you know any of that uh, influenced you as a musician that you knew that okay if i want to do metal i want to have like this detailed cool cover art and whatever oh absolutely i mean that I mean, that's like one of the coolest things about metal, right? Like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah, uh, was it was it the album art that caught your attention, or was it the music first, or which way it was it? Like, you know, did you spot like, you know, that's cool, you know, let's listen listen to that, or was it the other way around, or both? Oh, al album art for sure, mm. like. Like again, I mean, like Iron Maiden, like being a little kid and seeing all those like amazing album covers, like that all immediately sparked your interest. Mm -hmm. And even like looking at like a Morbid Angel cover, like or something like that, you know, it's like I don't know, that shit always piques your interest, you know, like um, you know, your <laughs> your deviant curiosity. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, do you remember where the first spark to start singing came from? Oh, oh, well, I mean, I knew I couldn't play any instruments. <laughs> um, and I definitely like I, I tried to sing like an actual like um like singer sing, you know. Mm. Yeah. Like um I was in like chorus class when I was in middle school and I sucked. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I liked it. I liked being able to perform and stuff, but I just wasn't a really good singer. Um, mm. But then I kind of realized, like, I got more into, like, punk rock and, like, aggressive kind of music. Like, you know, like, uh, grindcore and, like, heavy metal and shit. And um, I realized that I did have a, a way of singing but it wasn't like your typical singer type of singing, you know, it's a little different. Yeah. Did you actually ever try, you know, again, you know, to do like clean singing stuff like, you know, you used to do when you in a choir when you were younger? And it, it, it's all right. It doesn't sound that good. I'm kind of monotone in a weird but I don't think it's what other people hear. <laughs> so, um, you know, I I can I can clean sing a little bit. I kind of do on like some some way songs, but um, I'm not really interested in doing that. Um, and I definitely don't feel like it's where I I don't feel like it's my strong arts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you eventually, you know, picked up singing in your own style, you know, the sort of, you know, screaming or however you want to call it, did you encounter any like problems with your own voice? Um, well, I like, um, 
like I like fast singing, you know, like um, like Poison Idea, like and old suicidal tendencies, where mm. it's like it's not really clean singing, but it's like clean, like you, you it's enunciating. You can understand the words. Um, I, I like I like that style. Um, and you're basically shouting fast, you know, and, and it, it's a style for sure. But um, yeah, learning how to do that was pretty hard, um, especially in the younger, earlier years when I was partying really hard. <laughs> I would lose I would lose my voice a lot because you got to kind of take care of your voice when you're singing like that, especially when you're like I, I like to sing like that, like clear, enunciate, sing fast, shouting. But I also like to do screams like metal yells and, and screams and shit like that. So um, that does take take a strain on your voice. So, um, yeah, it definitely it took a while to figure out how to be able to do that and tour like 200 shows a year because um, sometimes it, it sucks, you know, it, it hurts. Yeah, for sure. What what are those things that you did, you know, to take it under control? Did you go to lessons or did you watch some tutorials or what did you do? Um, I went to a couple vocal lessons, but they don't really like, there's not a lot of people who sing that style. Mm. And especially there isn't a lot of music teachers or vocal coaches that know anything about that style. Most of them are like classically trained, but um, you can learn from that too. Because just simple shit like uh, warming up, like any kind of singer can do that shit, and it helps. Um, like the main thing that I learned when I did when I went to people like that, it wasn't really how to sing properly in my style or anything like that. It's more just like focusing on, like you're you're focusing on the fact that like your your vocal cord is like your mu is a muscle. It's, it, it is. It's, it's like two muscles touching together. So if you, like, let's say you're a bodybuilder, you exercise your arms. If you fucking, like, just don't exercise your arms and then jump into it and start lifting heavy weights, you're going to fucking feel like shit the next day and you're not going to be able to lift anything. And it's the exact same thing. So you've got to kind of, like, ease into it rather than just, like, me when I was fucking 25 years old drink a bunch of whiskey and just go and scream for an hour like that's not you have to really just think that you know your fucking vocal your voice box is a muscle and you have to like warm it up you know stretch it out like um ease into it and and uh I learned that the hard way <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, what happened? Did you have like some specific thing where you were like, oh, fuck, I need to, you know, go see a voice coach or whatever? Um, early on, actually, that, that is exactly what happened. Um, we didn't really know what was going on. And I was blowing my voice out and, and it was on a European tour. And I came back. We had like two days off and then we were going to start a tour with Converge. I mean, fuck, this is like 18 years ago. Um, and like dude my voice was so shot i couldn't even talk oh, man. and and it, and it was just i just had like laryngitis and mm -hmm. sometimes the only thing you can do is rest you just can't use your voice you know you can't use that muscle yeah. and it has to rest and sometimes you just can't do that and it fucking sucks but um i've had a couple really bad situations happen over the years but um luckily i i'm aware now of what what to do what precautions to take and i mean shit's gonna happen you know you can't not get sick on tour especially when you're in a band like ours where we party a lot or you're just in a lot of people's faces people are spitting in your mouth while you're trying to sing and you know you're gonna get you're gonna get sick i've gotten COVID twice now god damn it yeah <laughs> sucks <laughs> yeah hate it. Hopefully, no, no third time. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, no way, man. Yeah, and like you talked about, you know, if if it was a muscle, and you know, going to the gym, you have to do all the stuff. You have to warm up. So, what sort of warm up stuff do you do usually when you're about to go on stage on a festival or whatever? Well, um, 
yeah, I do like the little, you know, la 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 la, like the, like the simple shit that if any person goes to a voice coach, yeah, or a, you know, that's the shit that that's the first thing they tell you to do, man. They're like, yeah, but do I'm it. Gonna teach, I'm gonna teach you how to do vocal warm ups, but like also, it isn't just it isn't just that though. It's like like it's it's the long run, man. Like you gotta mm. like practice. You gotta like go in and sing for like a day like what i do is i sing i go to i have a practice space i'll sing i'll if i haven't practiced in a while i'll go and sing i'll do like a quarter of the set and then i'll just unplug my mic and i'll fucking leave and then the next time i go in i'll do half the set two days later i let my voice rest and then three days you know four days later or you know like after it's been like four days i'll go in the next day and then I'll do the whole set and I just kind of ease into it. So it's not just like right before playing a show, I'll do a warm up. It's actually, I'm warming my voice up like days before, mm. like before I go out on tour. Yeah. I'm basically telling people that they should practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, <that's shock. laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. But you know, being in a punk band, like, mm, or yeah. like, I feel like municipal waste came from like that attitude of like, we didn't really give a fuck like mm. that practices for nerds yeah you know mm. like but 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 now years later we understand the importance of like not sounding like shit when people pay money to see you play <laughs> yeah and the thing is that if you want to sound and play reckless you first gotta have some control because if you're just reckless you won't be doing it for long exactly and we're we're in it for the long haul yeah um, but we are still a little reckless, but I feel like that's just in our <laughs> yeah. blood. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to be a little reckless, you know, as long as you, you know, if you don't fuck yourself up, because you know, when yeah. you're a vocalist, you are the instrument. So if you fuck yourself up, you know, that's almost as if you're throwing a guitar, you know, on the wall or something. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of people yeah. relying on me. You know, yeah. So yeah, because if if you're not capable you know it's it's hard to make a show of course you can play without the singer but is that really what people came for you know that's not as cool right yeah <laughs> not as handsome there isn't as, as much handsomeness going on yeah it isn't as sexy as you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta have this the sex factor i use yeah i use sex factor <laughs> yeah you know every crossover trash metal grindcore show is full of <laughs> sex you know just sexy yes. yeah. just like a prince <laughs> prince concert you would say oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, is there something like do you avoid certain things you know whether or not it's food or certain like activities or whatever that would harm your voice um yeah that's actually a good thing too um i've noticed that um when i don't eat a lot of bread <laughs> like that kind of shit like carby stuff that, <laughs> the good that stuff. stuff the good yeah the stuff you <laughs> like like um yeah if you kind of take it easy on that stuff um that helps a lot um that not doing cocaine <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> cocaine cocaine really fucks your voice up i don't know if uh You heard it here first. <laughs> and, and, and you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe this, but apparently cocaine isn't healthy for you either. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm blown away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, don't do that. And then, um, yeah, I kind of like, uh, I feel like, yeah, I really, I mean, it's really like your diet as well. Like you have to really kind of watch what you eat. I, I usually don't eat, um, It used to be I wouldn't eat an hour before we played, and now it's now it's now it's like three hours. I won't eat anything mm -hmm. three hours before we play. Sometimes four hours, but you want to have that weird window where you're like not hungry, but you're not like you know yeah. starving. Or yeah, like, or like you need you need food, to have you know? at least a bit of energy to give a show. But yes, yeah, yeah. But you, dude, I've played so many shows where like they like dinner. They're like, oh, dinner is right before doors it's like well fuck man i can't eat and or, or i'll eat because i'm starving and then i'm like burping between <laughs> songs and fucking up fucking up lyrics and shit because i'm like burping 
that's real that happens damn can you can you like mask it to you know it sounds like a growl when you're like <laughs> blurping or something yeah like a deep a deep burp like yeah like a gutter like like you know something that corpse grinder would do you know you're like <laughs> 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 you could try <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the on the contrary, is there something that you kind of need to do? Because I hear that a lot of vocalists kind of drink, you know, warm liquids or whatever to kind of make their voice a bit better. I don't do that. Um, a lot of people, everyone always says warm tea and honey. Mm. Yeah, that's what uh, I heard. And that's that doesn't I, I it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like the caffeine and tea tea or whatever, mm. like. Um, Something in it like dries me out. It makes it worse. Mm -hmm. I just drink a lot of water, like room temperature water. Crush that shit. Drink as many as you can. Because not only, not only like it's good for you, mm -hmm. it, you're cleaning yourself out, but it also helps you like your energy and like, you know, helps your voice a lot. Yeah, definitely. Drink water wherever you are, yeah. whatever you do, drink water. Drink a lot of water. Yeah. Drink a fuck ton of water. Like, <laughs> When I'm on the road, I'm, I I drink so much. It's like ridiculous. I had to stop and pee yeah. so much. I was just gonna ask, you know, if, if if it's too personal, but do you need to like take a pee pee stop every like ten minutes when you're on the road? <laughs> oh God! When when I and Reagan toured a lot, we we would have a van, and I would just piss in bottles and just because because I would have to pee so much. Yeah. And I, would, I would just yeah. lick, lick, pee in pee pee bottles. And whenever we stopped to get gas or whatever, I would just throw the pee-pee bottles out. Yeah. It's gross. <laughs> but that's well, life. And guess yeah. what? Guess what? Tour is gross. Yeah, so tour is. Yeah, you got you got like <laughs> sweaty, smelly dudes in the same van who can't go to the bathroom. You know, what happens yeah. in, in van stays in van or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a stinky van. Yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, do you have like any any vocal idols that you've had because everyone when they start you know playing or singing they always look up to someone in metal i always liked uh i liked um blame blame from the accused which is really cool because we have him on our new record mm -hmm. um but he's always been an influence for me uh jerry a from poison idea uh john from nuclear assault um I like Mike Dean, COC. Um, yeah, that, that kind of stuff. I like Joe Elliott from Def Leppard a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like uh, a lot of shit like that, you know? I like um, I Mike Muir from Suicide Tendencies, obviously. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, Sean from Cap... Uh, R.I.P. Yeah sure um do you remember the time when you started did your parents react to you uh starting to sing in heavy metal bands my dad wasn't really around at that time okay um my mom thought we were pretty awful but she was very very supportive that's good she wouldn't like she wouldn't come to our shows because she's not like yeah very um she's not <laughs> She's not very social, which is weird because I'm the opposite. But um, she was very, um, very supportive, like a little bit too much. And uh, she's she's a wonderful lady. I love her so much. Awesome. Shout out to all the metal mothers out there. Oh, yeah. Metal moms. Metal moms, the best. <laughs> metal, metal grandmas, too. Yeah. They're the ones... <laughs> They're the ones, you know, when nobody believes in the band, there's always a mother or grandma who comes to the show or supports in yeah. other ways. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, my dad, once my dad, my dad didn't understand, you know, my dad doesn't really understand that whole lifestyle or that whole world. And mm -hmm. um, once he figured out that people were really into us and, and <laughs> there was like this whole movement <laughs> going on um you know his son his son is on the cover of magazines and mm. shit and making music videos i feel like he once he figured that out he came around you know and like started to respect what i did he wanted me to like work with the family business mm. 
Um, and I wasn't very into that. That's not what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, but, um, but once he figured out that I was doing something cool that nobody in my family has ever done before, I think he, he, he came around big time. Yeah, it's, it's it's easy to understand someone once you kind of see that, you know, okay, they're getting somewhere with this, you know, not just playing bars and not really getting anything out of it. Right, yeah. Um, you know, we're not we're not rich or anything, but yeah, he understands he understands that I love what I do and and mm. uh people like it and it's, you know, it's a cool it's it's a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, people love it. Uh, I'd like to hear for the final question, if you have some tips, if there's like someone watching here who like, has like his Jeff Leppard posters on the wall and is thinking about, you know, oh, I want to be a singer someday. Do you have something to say to those kind of people? Um, if it freaks you out, like check it out. You might like it. It might change your life. <laughs> That's a cool life advice to anything, you know, if it freaks you yeah, out, man. check it out. <laughs> like, Like, you know, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but like, um, I grew up, okay, all right. So yeah, like when I grew up, it was, it, it was very similar. It was very similar to like going to, um, a video store back in the day, like a blockbuster yeah. and there, there, you would go in the horror section and there would be all of these fucking cool horror movie covers, you know? And then yeah. you kind of like, you kind of like, well, that looks fucking terrifying. I should, <laughs> I should check it out. <laughs> yeah it's like so, yeah, I'm like if it piques your interest if you're if it piques your interest there's probably a reason for that so dive in and see if maybe that's what you want to do that's or check true. out you know? yeah that's <laughs> very very true yeah thank you so much it was such a pleasure to talk to you and thank you for giving your time hell do. yeah thank you so much man um, yeah thank you so I like much your, i like your god flesh shirt <laughs> thank you thank you it's a good band Uh, hopefully see you guys uh, play live in Finland soon and you know definitely everyone should go and see you guys play. I think we're playing there with Anthrax in September or okay. October. Yeah that might be. Yeah, we're play- yeah October I'm pretty sure. Very, very cool you know I gotta ch- check out if there are tickets left. <laughs> Hell yeah yeah thank you so much man. Hell yeah dude bye be safe. Right. Cheers bye-bye. Bye-bye.